Good evening, my brothers and sisters. I have been asked to I have been asked to give a talk on home safety or safety at home, but specifically because of time, we are going to zero on just on Thai safety. Um, by way of introduction, when we are doing some research or presentation, what must have necessitated that research? What is the problem? Is there a problem? Yes, there are problems. Ties, as beautiful as they are, that we use in beautifying our houses, our offices, they are hazards. They are hazards. Records have shown that many people have died or seriously injured because of the use of ties. I'm a fellow of uh, Eastpon. Eastpon is an uh, institute of uh, safety professionals of Nigeria. And um, by the act of uh, 2004, we are the custodian of safety in Nigeria, Eastpon. Home or domestic safety is uh, concerned with uh, accidents and is concerned with how do we prevent this accident. The, the, the core of the issue is that we can prevent these accidents. And the only way we can prevent these accidents is to identify the hazard, analyze it, and then talk about mitigation. Because, like I said, safety, I mean, uh, ties have killed so many people. I don't want to mention names. But I know one of the biggest uh, well-known sage in the West died some years ago because of slips and fall from bedroom. Even in our kingdom here, I don't want to mention names. We're not told outrightly, but somebody died. That person died because of uh, slips from, from ties as he was climbing down from the staircase. Many people have died. Unfortunately, most of the deaths and injuries that, that come from ties at home are not reported. And so we don't actually have figures or that to use our statistics. But in the world today, about over 10 million persons die from accidents. And um, a lot of injuries and um, major ones, some of, some of them are minor, occur in our homes as a result of using of ties. It causes some pains apart from death. And some people may not even survive. When I, when I talk about survivor, I may not overcome the injury they had due to slips out of um, ties. Like I said, these accidents and injuries as a result of hazards from ties can be prevented. They have to be identified, analyzed, and control measures are usually put in place. Home accidents occur through two major things. Sleeps. Sleeps are, of course, you should know what we're talking about. Sleeps. If there is a wet floor or there is a slippery floor and you step on it unknowingly or knowingly sometime, it can slip you and before you know it, you fall. And it might result in death or injuries. Again, there are trips. When we talk about trips, we're talking about objects obstructing you. You might kick on it unknowingly. Or, there was a film, there was a, a video, something they sent to to us about a week ago now a man and a woman also they were carrying a pot of soup from the stage and they were carrying it down but there was a blockade somewhere they didn't know and as they were going down they hit on that object and they fell and the pot of soup see these are these are that is trip that's an example of trip and as we are, we are going to i'm going to tell you um, in the in the nearest future we'll tell you how to prevent them over 40% of home accidents are true slips, trips that result in falls. And when people fall, uh, many things can happen. And in fact, let me just say this, not here. We are being advised now, as beautiful as ties, that in your bedroom, especially when you have children, 
you should use rugs and not ties. So that if your baby falls, or even you, maybe during a dream or whatever, you fall, you can have a safe landing. Some sleeps result from slippery floors, like I, or wet floors, especially from ties. If you had a slip on a floor that is not very, very smooth, like a tie, you can have resistance. But when it is ties, you know ties are very smooth. And I'm going to tell you very, very shortly the types of ties we have in our homes. There are many different sort of type, type of ties, and it depends on the ones you want to use. You know the, the, the ties we use in the kitchen or in the toilet is not the one we use in the parlor. Anyway, so uh, many people use ties these days. They are very beautiful. In fact, some houses now, both inside wall, even outside, they use the ties for beautification. There is a danger in that also because ties are very heavy. And so when you put on so much ties in your house, either inside, outside, whatever, they weigh the house down. And in this country, but especially this part of the world, we don't do soil sample before we build our houses. So when you have heavy weights, you see that the house will be going down gradually. Although ties are good, they have their own dangers. Yes, in homes, generally, generally, what are the causes of accidents in homes? Highly polished floor. We can regard ties as highly polished floor. Do there are some houses even that the floor even is even wood but they are highly polished and once once they are highly polished they can slip you slippery sli uh, slippery wet slippery or wet tiles obstructed view i mentioned before obstructed view when you're not seeing you're carrying lo uh, uh, a load clusters in your ways that can create uh, impediments poor lighting system wrinkled carpets Poor, ha poor housekeeping. Poor housekeeping. I, I, I was telling somebody one day that if I'm in my parlor and the light is seized and I don't have a torch or whatever, I can walk to my room. I will still open about two, three doors because there is proper housekeeping. But if somebody moved a stool from where it's supposed to be to where it's not supposed to be at that particular time, then I will have a trip. Not a sleep anyway. I will have a trip and I will have an accident. So there should be proper housekeeping, unsuitable floor covering. There are times we cover our floors with some amount of um, dangerous objects. Dangerous objects that can sleep us. So we must be very careful on the type of things we use in covering our floors. Well, the question again is, what are actually ties? Ties, yes, we're talking about ties. Tie safety. What are ties? Ties are flat or curved pieces of fired clay. Most of the, most of the uh, ties we use are clay that are fired at a very high temperature. Or even stone that are fired at a very high temperature. Or even concrete that are, when I talk about concrete, I talk about cement, concrete, and what have you. Used for floors or walls and up to ornamental uh, objects. Ties give the room beautiful looks and a sense of relief. It, it cools the room when, when you have ties. In fact, if you are hot, the, the weather is very hot, and you are feeling heat, if you sleep on the bare ties alone, you have some amount of uh, coolness. And it makes the floor to be hard. When we, when, when we talk about hard floors, there are times when we talk about jiga in those days. How many of you don't know about jiga? You know about jiga? Uh -huh. when you're in those days when our floors are sandy it gives room for shiga, uh, uh, jiga to breathe but when the floor is hard you cannot have such things so it's an advantage there are many types of ties the ceramic ties the porcelain ties the glass ties the glass ties are usually very bright shining and very very beautiful but they are more dangerous. The query ties, which are usually very tough, and they are mostly traditional. They, they don't use to bake it all that uh, on a high temperature. You just cut them in a such a way, and you can place them in your house, and then use cement or whatever to do that. Then stone ties. These are natural, beautiful ties. We we'll come across it. There are best. There are some best ties. There are some ties 
Not all ties you can use for your homes. There are ties for specific places. There are, if you go to the cemetery sometimes, they use ties in beautifying the graves. Some of those ones you may not want to use in your homes. So the type of ties you need to use for your homes that are beautiful and durable are these ceramic ties, the cement ties, the terracotta ties, the mosaic ties. The mosaic ties from the name is of different colors. The natural stones, the vitrified ties, this is what we use mostly here now. Query ties and then bedroom ties. Bedroom ties, like I said at the time, you must not use the the floor, the pile of tiles that are very ventrified for your toilet or for your bedroom because they don't have grips. And so we must very careful when you go to buy tiles, ask for a very special one for the bedrooms and especially the kitchen. What are the causes of accidents as a result of tiles, using tiles? Tiles accidents are mostly caused from sleep and trips resulting in falls, especially in bedrooms and in kitchens. Many of us, especially the ladies, when we do certain activities in the kitchen and there is a spill of water, even water, or the talk of oil, we must learn to clean them very properly. If not, that oil, that grease, that soup or whatever, we make the floor to be very slippery. And when it is very slippery, you can have a slip. Yes. The intention of one of these, uh, of these uh, lectures that we're talking to mothers and fathers here, our children will fall more prey to these sleeps than adults when they are playing. They might be carried away. Again, there are some ties that are not, that are not maintained. They are broken and they are left like that. They may not cause sleeps, they, but they will cause trips. I want to let, I want to, I hope you know the difference now as I'm going, the difference between sleeps and trips. Trips are things you stumble on and you fall. But sleeps are, you step on your leg, your leg or I mean on the floor, maybe because it's slippery, and it will slip you and you fall. So broken ties, we actually prevent sleeps. But if we cause trips, both of them are also dangerous. Then there are times when you don't lay your ties very well, some up and some are down, you can have trips. When your, your tiler, did not lay the ties very well, you can have dangers from uh, having trips. And when you have trips, you are likely to fall. I was trying to look at, again, though I've mentioned it, what is sleep? What is, what, what is trips? Fall actually is as a result of sleep or as a result of trips. They all end up in falls. So the ultimate of sleeps and the ultimate of, of uh, trips are falls. And when you fall, it depends on how you fall. And when you even fall, if you fall on a, I mean, on a soft ground, better. But ties are hard. And so you are going to have problems. When there is a fall as a result of trips or slips, you will have pains. There will be contusion, swells, either in your joints or, or the part you use in hitting the floor. Uh, broken bones might result, fracture. Um, there are many types of fractures, you know, especially on the arms, because as you are falling, you tend to aid yourself with the hand. And it's, in most cases, you have a cumulated and a compound uh, fracture. Somebody had fallen as he was falling, he supported himself with his hand, and the bone got broken, and the bone went into each other. We call those when compacted the uh, fracture. I don't, I'm not going to teach first aid now, but mostly uh, force like that results in fractures. And such fractures, if it happens to the head, too bad. It can lead to death. And so in some cases, apart from fractures on arms and, and hands, some force can result in instant death because of the part of the body that is affected. You can have broken rims even. And when you have broken rims, you can have uh, internal hemorrhage or internal bleeding. And if it's not well checked, it can lead to death. The, the, the cross of this lecture is not how many types, how many types of types we know, or uh, how, how beautiful they are. The important thing here is the prevention. 
of tire accidents. It is important that we know them, not to leave to ourselves, so that we can also give that knowledge to people at home who are not here now. Yes, I mentioned good housekeeping one time, as it is, that can cause uh, accidents. And so, the opposite of good housekeeping is tidiness. Tidiness in the sense that if there is an object in a place and you took that object to a particular another place to use it for some time, when you finish, you are advised to return it back to where it's supposed to be. Like I said, if there is seizure of light even, because you know your house and because there is no obstruction, because nobody has moved certain things, you can walk to your room even with your eyes closed. But if the house is not tidy enough, if there is no good housekeeping, then there will be a problem. Yes, there is a proverb somewhere that uh, this one good, this one good. Now they make a mad man house, they fool. Many of us, there are so many things that are not useful in our houses. But you always like them. If, the, the rule says if, if you have an object or an ornament in your house, that you have no use for the next two weeks or for the past two weeks, then it's, not of, it's of no use in your house. Discard it. Because in an attempt to say, I like this, I like this, the house becomes very crowded and that will bring poor housekeeping. So we must avoid crowdiness in our houses, crowdiness in our kitchens, crowdiness in even in our bedroom. Because when there, are crowd, when there is crowdiness, it leads to stuffiness and some other implications. Now, oils, cuddles, pools, leftover shampoos, or whatever, shower, uh, shower gel must be rinsed immediately. This concerns our ladies mostly. In the bathroom, in the bathroom, sometimes we use shampoo, uh, shampoo. Sometimes we use some kind of greasy oil um, apparatus. Often than not, apart from the one you have used, some of them will spill and they will cause problems on the floor, especially to, those, to somebody who does not know that that kind of oil or grease is there. So in our toilets, in our bedrooms, and in our kitchen, any greasy object or oil or whatever that we have used, make sure we clean it properly because it will cause sleep. And when there is a sleep, there is going to be a fall. And when there is a fall, there is going to be an accident. And when there is an accident, there's going to be an injury or even fatality. So immediately you, you use this oil, um, grease, shampoo, or whatever, shower gel, please remember to clean them very properly. Rinse the floor when you are finished. Again, there are some of our bedrooms that were not well laid. And so the gradients... The gradients of flow of water is not there. So water collects on some part of the bedroom, when, even when you are finished. Yes, at times, you, some people sweep it when they are finished. But it's advisable you call back your, your tiler to come and do some other work. But if that happens, make sure there is no leftover water in your kitchen or in your bathrooms. Yes, prevention continues. Many of us use bath. Am I right? In fact, we, from the safety point of view, baths are becoming outdated. Outdated in the sense that from investigation and from instant literature, we have discovered that a lot of people have lost their lives as a result of using the bath. Now, the bath becomes more dangerous as you are beating and you are using soap or you are, you are using some oily whatever it becomes very very slippery in fact in some cases some people advise to even sit down while using those things and clean themselves before some people stand that's more dangerous but if you cannot do all that and you must use uh, bath and in some cases not only bath even the bedroom floor itself they are slippery because of um, soap being used or some other i mean um, oil for beautification that are being used. So you need to buy bath mats. There are so many types of bath mats. And the usage is important. 
Because there are some maps unknowingly to you, you, you may not have placed it well. It can even become more a disadvantageous thing than when you do not even use it. So you must know how to use this uh, bath mat in your bedroom and in your bath. And um, if you look at the, 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 the bath mat too, the other side of it grips to the, to the bath. But some people put it the other way around. And once you put it the other way around, knowingly or unknowingly, knowingly or you don't, or, or to somebody that doesn't even know, and it comes into it, it becomes more dangerous. And so we have some types. The anti-slip surfaces, some of them are called glazed titanium, steel, enamel surface, better anti-slips, greater slips resistant. You see, if you go to meet those who are selling ties and you want to buy these masks, they can tell you the good ones. But beyond that, they should tell you how to use them. Some are more resistant than some. Maybe because of cost, you may like to go for the inferior one. But if you must use it at all, please, we advise to use the very good ones that have better grips on the floor or better sleep resistance, no minding, not minding the cost. And again, you should be told how to use it. We also advise in our bedroom and even on our, on our step cases to use hand, hand handles or reels. Uh, well, during the COVID, using reels was a bit discouraged. But for safety reasons, we are advised to use the rails, especially when you are climbing the steps. Some steps are very dangerous. The, 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 the gradient is very, very poor. And in some cases, most of our steps are made of ties. And some of those ties, so there are special ties for step cases, not the type you use for your floor that you use for your step cases. They should have the one that almost like the ones you use in your, in your bedroom and in your kitchen. And so, if you must put ties on your rails, whatever, on your, on your step case, whatever, put, please provide rails to hold. In climbing rails, in climbing step cases rather, it is advisable to use the rails, not only because of the ties. At times, either naturally or otherwise, you may have some hazy giddiness. Hazy giddiness, I don't know how to break, break it down. You, uh, some amount of um, confusion or some amount of um, uh, not being sure of yourself. It may be as, as, as a result of alcohol or illness. Your brain or whatever may not be as calculative. And so when you hold the rail, it can stabilize you for some time to regain your consciousness before you climb along. There should be good lighting system. Lighting, when it is poor, you miss your steps, you don't see obstructions, you, you bump into things you're not supposed to bump into, you even bump into human beings. And so we advise as a way of preventing um, uh, accidents from, from ties to use or to provide good lighting system. I put this one here. Caution. I know in my house, we tend to wash or clean the floor every Saturday. And that is when some people will like to be walking about. Knowingly or unknowingly, they don't know that the floor is wet and they, and they just feel that they can manipulate. But you don't know. So it's advisable to give some caution. It's advisable to give some warning. And one of the ways of giving this warning is to place this wet floor um, triangular um, object in that place. That announces to people that this place is wet. And so you should not step on it. In most um, offices, in most companies, it is practiced. But often than not, in our homes, it is not practice. And so, it may not be this very object alone. You can even write something on your own, if you have no money to buy this, and place it on the particular place where it, that, we are, that is where it has just been cleaned, and 
ensure that people don't go to that very environment at that particular time. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for listening and if there are questions, uh, we can answer some. Yeah. The question is, because of ties that are slippery, is it better to use our bare legs or wear something? The answer is this. Your bare legs, in some occasions, depending on the kind of ties and the kind of surface, your bare legs might have more grips on the floor. But if you must wear something, it must be that thing that has grips too. Anti-slippery objects. You know we have different types of slippers. If you know your floor is very slippery, then you are advised to buy slippers or something that you are going to wear that can have grips on that uh, surface. But I do know to a very large extent that when your legs is in contact when your legs your bare legs are in contact with the floor sometimes it gives you more confidence and assurance in terms of um, sleepy floor but i don't want to use myself as an example i don't i don't enter my bedroom with my slippers i place it by the side of the door so that when i'm coming out i wear it because i am more conscious and more comfortable my legs on the ground the answer is not straightforward that's why i'm trying to go here and there Were you on bare legs? Yeah, but that's a normal type of house I used to complain about my slippers. I don't ever walk on the tight with that slippers. Since then, even when there's a water, my slippers doesn't need to be So, it was just the way that helped me. I almost, by my life, you said, this is how I used to wage. I have these two things, but I was able to manage it. So, slippers is what I used Yes, so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is an interactive section. I don't know it all. That is why I did not categorically say no to the use of slippers, and I did not categorically say you must use your bellies. But there are, in either way, there are advantages and disadvantages. We can share it among ourselves. It's, you know, it doesn't have to be me alone. Yes, like, like he was saying, it's not a, it's not a yes and no answer. I, I know that sometimes in some heads, whatever, we are encouraged to use our bare legs. 
because there are bulbs, there are some bulbs in the, on the soul that when you begin to exercise them, they have some telepathic effect on you. There are some shoes even, there are some telepathic shoes. They are, they are studded and, we, and you are even advised to wear them so that you can massage the, the soles of your foot. He panics what? Thank you very much for the contribution. Um, when I started, I, sa I started by saying that is this um, lecture timely? From the look of things, it is timely. Because for you to choose a topic to teach, there must be a problem. If there is no problem that is going to solve, then it's a wasted energy. Most of our accidents are not recorded. And so those of us who try to do some research, we don't have these records. We just assume. But in the advanced world, they have records for all these things. Uh, I didn't mention names, because I know these people were, if I mention names, you say, oh, there are so many cases of deaths or serious injury from our bedroom and from our toilets because of ties. In fact, it is no more fashionable these days to have baths. Unless there are special baths, where the jacuzzi, the jacuzzi even, it has some protective uh, rays on this even, and it has grips, if you wash it. Uh, okay, often than not. And so we must be very careful, we must be very... Uh, so people that have baths now, they cover it with cloth. And bit, I don't know, I, I've seen it some. Cloth, uh, cloth, and then they, so that it... Because of the slippery nature, because the soap that you use or the gels that you use are to this uh, slippery nature. Thank you very much.